Welcome to John McGivern's Main Streets, the podcast that takes you behind the scenes of this popular TV program. Sometimes I think, my job is so hard. <laughs> You'll hear John and his producer Lois Maurer on the drive home as they chat about their impressions of the community and share interesting stories that you may not hear about anywhere else. Today's episode, Rochester, Minnesota. We have just left Rochester, Minnesota. We hardly are out of, like, <laughs> I can still see it. Right, but you are driving, which is a very treat for me, so thank you. You're welcome. And um, why are you driving? Because I want to get home quicker. Because <laughs> you're faster. <laughs> Amen, we'll be home. I think Rochester's like four, four and a half hours from Milwaukee. 401, it says. 401, so we'll be home in about three hours <laughs> since John's driving. <laughs> Well, there you have it. And it's not that we were so eager to get out of Rochester. It's that we've been on the road for eight days. Uh, nine days, isn't it? Ten days, eleven? Three months. Eight days. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, what did you think of it? What did you think of Rochester? It's, it's a, a big city. city. Yeah, that was yeah, just yeah. thinking the same thing. This yeah, is not a like city. a little town. This is a city. And um, very odd to be working in a city where the main industry is health. And, you know, all of the Mayo stuff is one thing, but all those ancillary businesses, too. It feels like everybody's in the healthcare industry, doesn't it? Well, they all support um, that industry. Right. So right. all the hotels, all the restaurants really depend on those people who are coming for health care. Right. Or the people, 40,000 people who work at Mayo. 40,000 people, over 40,000. Out of a population of, what did they say? 120. 120. So at least a third literally are working at Mayo. That's right. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so we spent some time at Mayo, but not the majority of the time at Mayo. No, because everybody knows Mayo is there. We wanted to also focus on things that people kind of don't know are there, you know? So the two things at Mayo we did, we talked to a doctor who used to be a, a pulmonary and an emergency care doctor for 38 years and retired last year. And in his retirement, he wrote a book called Rochester... <laughs> Oh, the sorry. East she wants us to turn left yeah, and have We mind. will. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, he wrote a book about the stories of Rochester. Right. Because I guess being a doctor for all those years just, yes. So we talked to the doctor. Okay. And, um, and then he took us up to the historical suites. Right, which are in the Plummer Building, which is still the old, it's now the oldest standing Mayo building, right? Right. Very historic. It has the last offices of Dr. Will and Dr. Charlie Mayo, the brothers. Their were they? offices were in there. And you know what I found the most interesting? Is that Will's office was like twice the size of Charlie's. Yeah. <laughs> and even being twice the size of Charlie's, it's nowhere near an average office size of any CEO in America today. No, it's pretty small. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, that's all he needed, you know? They had some very cool inventions there, though. Did you see the Nobel Prize in that office? Yeah. What was it for? Cortisone. Those doctors, they were researching cortisone, which is, you know, what that is. That's a, it's a steroid, hormone. right? Oh, it's a steroid hormone. Steroid hormone that, huh. that is secreted through the adrenal glands. And they, in doing the research, they discovered that it, it was great for inflammation. Right. And so through research and then the discovery, they won the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 1950. Wow. Amazing. And they had the actual Nobel Pro Prize there. Which I never, I've never seen one. I guess I don't know what that looked like. It's Doesn't not it look as like big as Olympic the Emmys. Metal? I, it's, right. it's, it's not as big as your Emmys. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> and it's not in whoever's uh, house. It's there at Mayo, so. I know. So that was cool to talk to the doctor who had written the book because, you know, he's got all that inside knowledge. It's it's um, also cool to talk to someone who works there. And that was um, Lasagna. Right. And she has been there for, I can't remember how many years she said, 30 some, right? Yeah. A long time. And she's one of those people that's got enough letters after her name that we had to ask her to explain them. What she does now, though, she's a... Uh nurse practitioner. Right. And an incredible singer. Yeah. So we went to where she was performing on uh, 
Sunday night and or Saturday night, wasn't it? Saturday night and we captured her and she's got an incredible voice and that was just really fun to see him outside their work environment. Yeah. So that was cool. So those were the two things we did at um, at Mayo that people would expect us to do. What was the thing that we did that, that people would be like, what? Oh. At Mayo. Oh, at Mayo? Yeah. I don't know what. The Carillon. Oh, of course. <laughs> That's because nobody knows it's there like I didn't before we went to Rochester. Now people are like, what's a Carillon? So describe what a Carillon is. A Carillon is... It's bells, big, ginormous, gigantic bells. They happen to be placed on top of the plumber building in the in the bell tower. Right. And the instrument that plays them, the carillon, is it's kind of like a xylophone on steroids, isn't it? It's like an organ that you have to pound with your fist. And there was a feet part of it too. Just like a big church organ, but you. You, you, you pound it with your fist. What and the side awesome. of, not your fist, but the side of your... Your hand. Yeah. Your, yeah, like the, the side of your The hand. back hand, the back end of your little finger right there. Yeah. From your wrist up, that's what you pound it with. And it was like, ow! And the, the Carol Lanier, um, whose name was um, Austin. Yeah, he was great. Uh, 20, I think he's 27 years old now. Yeah. He got the job when he was 24. Um, and he wants to stay there for 50 years. So how many bells? 56. 56. The biggest one weighs 7,840 pounds. Yikes. Yeah, it's huge. So the Kirillon is an instrument, is about 500 years old. Okay. Uh, it originated in the low countries of Europe, the Mayo brothers. They were familiar with Kirillons because they've been all over Europe, but it is very touching to see just how many people love and appreciate this instrument. It's kind of ingrained in the psyche of Rochester. Want to wear something that's going to support your favorite show? Shop at Main Street Store. Proceeds go to help us get next season into production. So come on, go shopping at MainStreets.tv. We did stand outside Big Blue and do a stand-up outside of IBM's um, property. So back in the height of IBM, Which all is of the, those buildings. Which is like 1990. Oh yeah, and they said how many... 8,000 people worked there, and it was all IBM people. And they, uh, $500 million worth of computer hardware went out of there in one year. And how much um, space was it again? Uh, too much. Like, it was like 3 million square feet. And if you drive by those buildings, which we did, you drive around them, it's amazing. And they all look the same, right? It's all And maze is the active verb there, as you said. <laughs> it's a maze. <laughs> it is. It was, it's, to think about that when it was in full swing had to be wow. You know, let's talk about the Nordic Shop. I thought the most fascinating thing about the Nordic Shop is that they sell more Dale of Norway merchandise than Dale of Norway. Than Dale of Norway <laughs> in Norway. Right, they do. In Rochester. And they have every style and every. They have every new piece that comes out goes to that shop. Yeah. And and some of it is designed by the woman, Louise, who yeah. owns the shop. Uh, that's a whole other topic. The subway, the skyway. Right. And then street level. So when you walk and you look and you drive around downtown Rochester, you're not even scratching the surface of what's actually there. Because there's a lower level called the subway, which has no transportation. It's all just like a big walkway, connects yeah. the, all of the campus of Mayo and everything inside, you know, the buildings that aren't connected to Mayo, right. but they're in, they're close by. So it's just, how many miles did she say? I don't know, but she said the Skyway had eight, eight miles. Eight miles, 27 different buildings connected by a Skyway, which is a walkway between buildings. Right, and the Skyway is public, and the subway is privately owned, which was also kind of like, huh? It's kind of amazing. Let's talk about food. Well, my okay, so you want to talk about favorite food? Yeah. That's hard, but I just loved Pasquale's Pizzeria because of Pasquale. <laughs> right. What an incredibly entertaining guy, and what 
awesome New York style pizza. Now I like New York style. Do you like New York style? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do too. It was good. And it was what what he wanted me to try was his favorite, which was the simplest. Yeah. It just had his sauce, it had his crust, it had just a little bit of oregano and cheese. Really good fresh mozzarella cheese from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, which was amazing. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, the, the sauce was his grandmother's sauce, and the um, the Crust. dough ball yeah. is what he called it. The dough was his recipe from the old country, because he had a really interesting story that he moved here when he was six years old, and when he was a junior in high school, his mom and dad moved back to Italy. Yeah. And he went back to Italy, and he missed his girlfriend so bad, who is now his wife and a wife of many, many years. Um, so he was Italian, American, Italian, American. <laughs> right. <laughs> and now he's an Italian American. We have Trombolis, calzones. Mm. Oh, Madonna me, look at this beautiful calzone. We have a stuffed pie. This is the stuffed pizza. A Sicilian focaccia style pie. Yeah. Melts in your mouth, mm. John. Mm. So that was one of our eats. Do you have another one? Yeah, what was the very first one that we went to? Brand stinking new in Rochester, except not really because they had pop-up shops. Oh, that was good. That was called Thai Pop. Mm -hmm. Thai Pop. Because they had pop-up restaurants, so they did another restaurant, it's brick and mortar, a beautiful store. It's a, just a great room in an old building. It used to be a bank in the turn of the century. And here, and, um, the owners, Annie, and her husband's name was? Ryan. Are they ever great business owners and just fun people to be around? Like, I would go into Thai Pop just to talk to them and the bartender, Jazz, because <laughs> I really liked her. But Annie um, is from Thailand. So when you talk about authentic, and she's actually the chef, right? She's right. the one who, they're her recipes, and she cooks it all, and she's so passionate about it. And it was just really unique and the place looks great just really fun well it's good and people should know that rochester really is uh, based on on health care yeah so when you go there there's always um and the corn tower because <laughs> that is iconic i had no idea until we did rochester that that corn tower which okay explain to them what a corn tower is no it's a water tower painted as an ear of corn that's all it is. And has been there since like 1930 something. 31. 31. And right across the street from that now is something called the workshop, food hall, and bar. Oh, and barbershop. And barbershop. <laughs> yeah. That's a really great story, too, of revitalization and people reusing old buildings that could have just been torn down and making something. Yeah. So that was Rochester. That was Rochester. And I think, you know, there's certainly enough to do. You know, check out the, there's certainly the Mayo Civic stay. Center. Um, oh, yeah. There's sure is on Broadway, which is their main street. Um, there's everything. I just was also astounded at how many hotel rooms, how many hotels. I, I just didn't understand that you needed that to support a medical center. It makes all the sense in the world. Right. But at first, when you drive into town, you're just like, wow, how many hotels can one city support? And the answer in Rochester is all of them. <laughs> It's amazing. It's amazing. So would you visit Rochester if you weren't a patient at Mayo? Yeah, I'd go back there. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Thanks, Rochester. It was fun. Thanks, Rochester. Curious to find out where John is traveling next? Head over to our website, MainStreets.tv, to learn more. Again, that's MainStreets.tv. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast and please leave us a review. It helps more people discover great programming like Main Streets. Look for us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram to follow all the action. John McGivern's Main Streets is produced by Plum Media in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Thanks for listening.